Hello and welcome to Fräulein Brehm's Life of Animals. Have you heard of Alfred Brehm and his wonderful life of animals? Back in the 1800s, it was a bestseller. Today, you're about to witness Fräulein Brehm's life of animals. And that Fräulein, that's me. Don't ask if we're related. Fact is, without Alfred, there would be no Fräulein. In the beginning, there was Alfred. And just like Alfred Brehm, Fräulein Brehm looks deeply into the lives and times of animals. The following story is not fictitious and any similarity to actual creatures, living or dead, has been scientifically observed and carefully noted. The earthworm. Lumbricus terrestris, king of the animals. Alfred says, in the beginning of every worm is the head, where there is an extraordinary string of nerve fibers that transports information from the sensory cells on the worm's skin directly to the lower cerebral ganglion, which is complemented by the upper cerebral ganglion, which amounts to the worm's brain, albeit a very modest brain. For lack of teeth, he gobbles and gulps food through his mouth that has been prepared, cooked and served up for him by billions of microorganisms. Prostomes Earthworms are gourmets of a kind. They possess exquisite taste buds in the head region that allow them to distinguish between what they do and do not like. Alfred says, if they do not find their nourishing puree, they prepare, almost cook their own food by pulling whatever they come across into their burrows. Everyone knows that the leaves, feathers, straws that one finds in the early morning hours as if they were planted there by children are being abducted during the hours of darkness by earthworms of all sorts. The leaf of a raspberry bush torn off. A mighty straw will be pulled with such force that it will snap right in the middle. Well, Alfred is not exaggerating in the least. Just look at this. Even Rumpelstiltskin would envy that. During the dinner, worms ensconce their rear ends inside the burrow. Worm home alone. Earthworms urinate via elegantly named nephridae, two on each column, which have funneled lashes that effectively lash urea out of the worm's body. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you worm's gut. The worm's gut is particularly attractive for microorganisms. It functions as a means of transport, a downright travel agent, as microbes insist on traveling almost exclusively with the excrement of worms. Via the anus at the end of the worm's body, microbes reach their final destination, where they're being ushered in and around beautifully situated worm casts. And action! Took an hour to get this pretty worm to do this, mind. Worms, master plaster caster, castings extraordinaire. Lumbricus terrestris, profession, keeper of the Edaphon, Mother Earth, and potential savior of the climate.